In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with Upstash's serverless vector database that just came out. I'm going to be also showing you how to get started with the new OpenAI Embeddings 3 large model. And I'm going to be setting up everything within Node.js, and I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to set up a vector database on Upstash. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is make an account for Upstash. They have a generous free tier for the different services that they offer. Once you're logged in, if you go over to Vector, you can create a new index. You can name it whatever you'd like. We have a couple options in terms of regions that you can choose from. You can choose Ireland or you can choose Virginia. I'm going to be showing you how to set it up with 256 dimensions. One of the reasons I want to set it to 256 dimensions is I want to demonstrate how you can use shortening embeddings from the new text embeddings endpoint from OpenAI. It's a really neat feature where you can have up to 3072 dimensions or as small as 256 dimensions. Now, just a few quick tips on how to choose the size of dimensions if you're considering this. So on the higher end of the spectrum, if you're looking to use the full-fledged 3072 dimensions, that's going to cost more, but it's going to be more accurate. One thing I haven't tested out, but it is a bit of an assumption, is I'd imagine the smaller the dimension size, the faster the retrieval is going to be from your vector database. The first thing that you're going to do is just open up a new workspace within VS Code. So if you have an empty directory, you can npm init-y. From there, once initialized, we're going to install a couple dependencies. So we're going to install the upstash vector dependency as well as OpenAI. Once you have that, you can go ahead and touch index.js as well as .env. Within your .env, we're going to get a few different environment variables. To get your OpenAI key, just log into your OpenAI account, grab the API key and paste it in just like this. Then for upstash, once you set up your vector database, if I just go ahead and set this up, you can see we're going to choose the free option in this example, and you're able to go over to the .env here and you're able to copy these and paste them in. Now that we have that set up, we're going to head within our index.js. We're going to have three dependencies. We're going to have OpenAI, we're going to have upstash vector as well as .env for our environment variables. What we're going to do is we're going to create an OpenAI instance for our API calls. You don't need to explicitly pass in your API key so long as you follow this format. So the OpenAI underscore API underscore key within their v4 release of their node SDK, you no longer have to explicitly set that. From here, we're going to initialize our new upstash vector index with our environment variables that we had just pasted over. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a number of different functions. The first function that we're going to create is a function to generate the embeddings for a given text. We're going to wrap everything within a try catch just so we know if anything fails within our application. Within our try catch is we're going to go ahead and create embeddings. So we're going to specify that the model is text embeddings three large. We're going to pass in the text that we're going to be passing in near the end of the application here. And then this is going to be how we set the dimensions that we want returned from the OpenAI. What embeddings are, if you're not familiar, is essentially they're a numerical representation of what you're sending it. So if you're sending it text, it's going to be the relatedness between different items. If you think about it in terms of zoo animals, if you think about an elephant, a lion, and a tiger, zoo animals, just as an example, are going to be numerically grouped together. But if you go ahead and embed something like a Toyota or a different car, that's going to be grouped in a different position. Those floating point numbers within the array that gets returned are going to be further away if they're less related to the vectors it's comparing it to. So here we're just going to see whether we get a valid response from the OpenAI endpoint. If we do, we're going to return that result. And if we don't, we're just going to return that we got an unexpected structure and an error had occurred. Then we're going to log out the error if this fails. Next, we're going to have a function that splits our text and upsurds the data within our upstash vector database. You can use something like Langchain or Llama index to split up all your text if you'd like, but it's pretty simple to set something like this straight within the JavaScript within your code. We're going to establish the chunks. So you don't need to worry about the regex too much, but essentially what this is doing is it's going to be chunking based on a thousand characters within the text that is passed in. We're not going to allow anything higher than 1,000 characters to be sent to the OpenAI Embeddings API. Then from there, we're going to loop through all of the different chunks. We're going to give a chunk ID to each of them. Then with each chunk of text, we're going to go ahead and generate those embeddings. Once we have those embeddings returned, we're going to be inserting them into our vector database within Upstash. So we're going to be sending in a handful of things. We're going to be sending in an ID. We're going to be sending in the vector itself, and then we're going to be sending in the metadata of the text itself that was embedded. Now, within the metadata, you can include a lot of different things. So say if there's a URL or a file path, other information that might be relevant, you can throw that all within the metadata here. Then we're just going to console log. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to establish a function that is going to query 
that vector database. Now to query a vector database, you also have to pass in that query as an embedding. You can't just pass in raw text. So when you send in a query, it's going to embed that. You're going to have that numerical representation, and that's going to be what it uses to compare within the vector database. So it's going to scan through all of those different vectors and find the ones that are most related. Within the parameters of the function, we're also going to allow for the default of up to the top three results to be returned back. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and generate that embedding. From there, we're going to go ahead and query our index. We're going to be passing in our query embedding. We're going to be passing in the number of results that we want. And then we're going to pass in that we do want that metadata returned. Then from there, we're going to log out the result. Alternatively, if there are any errors, we're going to log those out and throw an error. The last function we're going to write before our main function that's going to demonstrate all of these different functions and how you can use them within an application is going to be a way on how you can interact with an LLM. So a popular application for vector databases is RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now, what we can do with this is we can pass in our top results to the LLM with some simple instructions. I'm going to be showing you just a very basic example on how you can set something up like this without having to use a framework or anything like that. What we're going to do is we're going to leverage that function we just wrote. We're going to go ahead and ask for the top three results for the query that we're sending in. Then what we're going to do once we get those top results back, we're going to log them out and just so we see everything is coming back as we expect. Then from there, we're going to set up a chat completion from OpenAI. Within our chat completion, we're just going to declare messages and our system message, we're going to have it be you are an expert retrieval augmented generation system. Respond to the query with the information from the top result text. So you can really finesse this a bit more if you'd like, but this is just like I mentioned, a basic example. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send it in the query. So you could imagine a chat application where a user asks a question. I'm just going to stringify all the top results. Now you can normalize the data if you want. You don't necessarily need to pass in the things like the ID or the score, things like that. But in this case, I'm just going to show you a really quick example on how you can do this. So I'm just going to specify that we're going to be using GPT 3.5 Turbo because it is a relatively cheap option. Once we've added those vectors to our database, we're going to go ahead and query them. We're going to perform that similarity search. We're going to get the top results from those. And then this is going to be how we send those results to something like GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 to essentially summarize and give us the answer that we're looking for. What I'm going to do is I'm first just going to run the top functions here. So I'm going to run these one by one, just so you see how exactly they all work. If I go ahead and node index.js, we'll see that the records with the ID and the text were upserted. And what you can do here within Upstash, which is really nice, you can go over to the data browser and you can see both the vectors as well as the metadata. You can also pass in a query here if you'd like to go ahead and search the vectors within the GUI. It was a really nice option to be able to interact with it within the GUI. I'm going to go ahead and comment these out now that we know we have some data within our vector database. And then I'm going to go ahead and send a query. So our query is which zoo animals can dive the deepest. We're going to go ahead and run this. If I pull up our console here, we see our top results. So we see the top three results. We see that we have our elephant vector. We have our penguin vector and our giraffe vector. And we have a score we see that the text for the elephant ID and the elephant text is higher than the penguin and giraffe text. Now that means that it is more similar. So now just to show you the last example, if I just go ahead and comment out query by text and send the results to OpenAI, remember within this function, we still use query by text. All of that text that you just saw there, we're just sending that JSON stringified object to OpenAI. Like I mentioned, you can normalize that data pass in fewer tokens if you'd like, or only pass in the metadata that you'd like within the LLM. And if I just save this and run this one last time here, so you'll see that our result back from OpenAI is the zoo animal that can dive the deepest is the elephant. Elephants are known to be excellent swimmers and can dive up to 30 feet underwater, which is referencing pretty much exactly the information that we're passing in within our vector database. This is just a quick example on how you can use both Upstash as well as Text Embeddings 3 from OpenAI. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.